Hello, my name is Belinda and I'm a curator at the National Football Museum. The National Football Museum collection is packed with objects that tell the story of the game of our lives. In this film, we are celebrating the centenary of one of the most important games in the history of football, with a selection of objects exploring the story of First World War munitions team, the Ditko Ladies. This match took place on the 26th of December 1920, between Dick Kerr's and St Helens, in front of a record-breaking crowd of an estimated 53,000 people. The first object to kick off this first 11 series is one of the oldest objects we have in our collection relating to the Dick Kerr ladies. This medal comes from their first season in 1917-18 and was awarded to one of their earliest players, Alice Standing. Alice played in the team's first match at Preston North End's Deepdale Stadium at Christmas 1917 against local team, the Coltard Foundry. The game took place in front of 10,000 fans, raising £600 for charity. From this game, the team would go on to dominate women's football in the 1920s and 30s. Our second object in this week's First Eleven is a postcard of the Dick Kerr ladies team. Although the exact date is unknown, we believe this to be an early image of the team, with players like Bella Trainer, Lily Jones, Miss E. Clayton and Alice Standing. Postcards are an important visual record of Dick Kerr ladies and other women's teams. Here the team are wearing their iconic black and white striped kits, worn in their formative years. This beautiful pennant was probably presented in 1921 to the Dick Kerr ladies by their fierce French rivals, Firmina Sport of Paris, ahead of a match played at Stoke in front of 15,000 spectators. The Dick Kerr ladies won the match by five goals to one. By the 1920s, the women's game was flourishing in France and international football would become an important part of the Dick Kerr ladies' story. Teams played each other at home and abroad, making lasting friendships and enjoying a lifestyle unknown to most working class English women. Our fourth object is a rare programme from an important year for the Dick Kerr ladies and all the women's teams playing in England. The Dick Kerr ladies played a lot of games throughout 1921 and this programme refers to a game between them and a the Yorkshire team, the Atalanta ladies in May, just a few months before the Football Association would bring in their restrictions on the women's game. The game was played in front of a crowd of 25,000 at Hillsborough Stadium in Sheffield. This was the last year that women's teams like the Dick Kerr ladies played in these large stadiums. And our next object tells us why. In December 1921, the FA Council passed a resolution to prevent women's football teams from playing on the grounds of clubs affiliated to this association. Although this was not a legal ban on women playing football, it made it more difficult for women to find a suitable space to play matches and attract large crowds. This helped perpetuate the view that football was a male game. The ban affected many players, including those playing for the Dick Kerr ladies, and this had a long-term effect on the development of women's football. The ban wasn't lifted until 1971. Despite the ban, the Dick Kerr ladies continued to play football, and their determination to play the game they loved helped the women's game survive and become what it is today. Object number six, is this beautiful medal awarded to Lillian Bridget of Stoke Ladies for winning the first and only English Ladies Football Association Cup in 1922. The ELFA was founded in response to the FA ban, but the competition was short-lived and ran for only one season. Without the ability to attract large crowds in stadiums and similar competitions to the men's game to support it, the ELFA struggled to get off the ground. Significantly, the Dick Kerr Ladies chose not to take part in this competition. Many people may be surprised to learn that the Dicker ladies helped introduce floodlights to the wider game. Our seventh object is a drawing from the Illustrated London News in 1924, showing the Dicker ladies playing a match against Hayes ladies of Bradford at Burnley Cricket Ground. Although this wasn't the first time artificial light had been used as a football match, this match used electric lights installed at the ground for this purpose. The paper tells us that 30 masts around the playing area, each 35 feet high, carried 60 powerful electric lamps, giving a lighting intensity of 90,000 candle power. The lamps and reflectors were installed by the Siemens Lamp Works of the English Electric Company and the cables and fittings by the Dick Curl Works. Object 8 is this fantastic cartoon from 1937, depicting the Dick Curl ladies' story and the role of their longtime manager, Alfred Franklin. This cartoon was created to mark a match between the Dick Curl ladies and a team from Edinburgh, who challenged them for the title of Champions of the World. This game took place in Blackpool, with many newspapers reporting on Dick Kerr's becoming world champions. This cartoon shows that in 1937, the story of the team was still fascinating readers, and their role as pioneers was already being recognised. 
Object number nine is another rare program from our collection that shows the long lasting influence of the team. This program commemorates the match between England and France at Bellevue Speedway Stadium in Manchester in 1953. The program states that England are represented by the world famous Preston ladies, formerly Dick Kerr ladies. Inside the program, Kathleen Latham is named as Clark of the Tour. At 10, we have a life-size bronze statue of Dick Kerr player Lily Parr, unveiled at the National Football Museum in 2019. The statue, sculpted by Hannah Stewart, is significant as the only statue of a female football player in the UK. Lily Parr has become one of the best known of the Dick Kerr ladies team, celebrated for her playing style, success and longevity. Lily played in the 1920 Boxing Day game against St Helens and took part in the team's tour of the United States in 1922. Lily Parr challenged many of the negative stereotypes surrounding the role of women and their ability to play football in this period and continued to play until 1951. Since her death in 1978, Lily Parr has become and continues to be an inspiration for many. In 2019, the National Football Museum commissioned artists Will Binley and Eugene Noble to respond to the museum's women's football collection and produce a series of banners to celebrate the Women's World Cup. Our final object is one of the banners, which features a quote from Leon Stryker and Ballon d'Or winner Ada Hegerberg, whose demands for equality in football have resonated with many. In an interview, Ada said that one day the men in suits will understand. Even 100 years on, Ada's plea echoes the sentiments of the women who played in the 1920s and whose lives were impacted by the FA ban. Some of these objects and more will be at the centre of our new Lily Parr History Maker Gallery opening at the National Football Museum in spring 2021. Please remember to subscribe to keep up to date with our women's football content and find out more about our future exhibitions. You can also find us on Twitter by following at Football Museum.